As a child, I remember Pokemon taking the world by storm, and while the franchise may not be what it once was, I'll never forget holding a Game Boy Color in my hands for the first time with a copy of Pokemon Yellow inserted in the back. And as a kid who never quite grew up, Clearly, I had an overwhelming sense of nostalgia hit me back in 2021. I wanted to recreate my childhood. I wanted to go back and purchase all the games that I owned growing up and, and a little bit more. And so I chose generations one and two because those are the generations that I was the most familiar with growing up. This included Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, and Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Now the whole process took me about six months, give or take. And the only reason why it took me that long is because I didn't simply want to go to eBay and overpay for them. What I wanted to do was get out there and actually hunt down the games. It was kind of like real life Pokemon hunting to, to a certain extent. Now my journey took me to game stores that were no more than just 10 minutes from my house all the way up to about two hours from my house. Basically, if there was a game store that had one of the games I needed in working condition with a good label, I was willing to drive to it. Now, with all that being said, I collected all the games and I collected all the badges. Now nah, I'm just kidding, I actually bought these from Amazon. But once I got all the games, I only had one game left to go, and that was Pokemon Gold. My buddy Tracy found out about it, and he mailed me a copy, complete in box, of Pokemon Gold. And Tracy, if you're watching, thank you so much for that, because that is definitely one of the best gifts anyone has ever given me. If any of you know anything about retro game hunting, then you know complete in box, regardless of the condition, can cost hundreds of dollars. And so this is definitely a phenomenal gift, and I'm very grateful for it. You may be watching all this and saying, hey, that's kind of cool, I think. But what in the world does any of this have to do with your YouTube channel? You are a PC gaming YouTube channel. Why are we talking about Pokemon? Why are we talking about retro game hunting? Excellent question. Well, in order to answer that question, the one word I would use would basically be emulation. But it goes beyond that. It's not just a simple, yeah, emulation, everybody knows what that is. Uh, There's a little bit more there. Let me explain. First of all, let me tell you about another YouTuber. His name is Jeremy. He runs a YouTube channel called Below Average Gaming. He did a Pokemon project that absolutely blew my mind. He found a way to rip the ROMs off the original Pokemon cartridges and port them into an empty Nintendo 64 cartridge. Then he went the extra mile by having custom artwork made for those cartridges, a label, a box, everything. These things look like legitimate retail Nintendo 64 games. You could literally put these on any game store shelf and people would think they were legit from Nintendo. That's how good these things look, but they're more than just aesthetics. They actually work. I'll have his video link below if you want to check it out. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because I saw these videos and I, I couldn't stop thinking about them. I thought it was the coolest thing or one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And ever since then, I wanted to do a Pokemon related project here on the channel and I wanted to find a way to incorporate it with PC. And finally, I found a way thanks to the GB operator made by Epilogue. Now to be completely clear, this is not a new product. And this is not the only product out there that does what we're about to talk about. And also this product was not sent to me. This is not a sponsored video, but real fast while I'm talking about sponsors, I am building a sponsor free future or I'm trying to, and I'm doing that through the efforts of Patreon. And so right now I want to say thank you to all my Patreon members. I literally just launched the page less than a week ago and all of you are already supporting me. I'm humbled by that. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm very grateful for it. And if you want to be a part of helping me create a sponsor free future here on this channel, click the link down below in the pinned comment. Now the GB operator made by Epilog is very easy to use. Overall, the package is just very simplistic. All you have to do once you receive the operator is go to the Epilog website and download the free software, connect the GB operator to your PC via USB and insert a cartridge. From there, the operator software should detect your cartridge and launch automatically. If it doesn't, just open it manually. And then from there, you are able to launch your game and play it just like you would play it in any other emulator. I think the emulator that is powering this is the MGBA emulator. Now, to be completely honest, this is my first major complaint here, and that is the fact that this emulator, or at least the way they're using the emulator, does not allow for any cheats or hacks or anything like that. So this is a default vanilla experience, and there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you're looking for. But one of the cool parts about emulating and being on PC and all of that stuff is using hacks, mods, cheats, 
all that stuff, right? So I definitely wish they would natively allow for that, but it's okay, there's a way around it. You might've noticed that the software allows for download game, download save file, upload save file, upload game. And we're gonna talk about what all that means. First and foremost, download game, straightforward. You can download your ROM directly off the cartridge. So you can have a copy of it forever and do really whatever you want with it. The second thing I wanna point out is download save. Obviously these Game Boy cartridges have batteries inside of them that die and when they die, you lose your save file. We all know about that, right? So if you wanna save your save file forever, this is how you do it. You can download your save file, store it on an external drive, USB, whatever you want in the cloud, anywhere, and you can have it forever. The second benefit here is that you can download your save file, upload it to a completely different emulator of your choosing that does allow for cheeks, hacks, whatever, modify the game however you want, and then port it back over to the original cartridge through the upload save feature. I know this works for a fact because I tested it and I tried it with Pokemon Crystal. I downloaded my save file from Pokemon Crystal. I ported it over to a different emulator that did allow for cheats and hacks and all that stuff. I entered two cheat codes, one for a master file and one that would allow me to encounter Celebi in the wild. Then I was able to capture Celebi, save that file and port it back over to the original physical cartridge of Pokemon Crystal. I uploaded the save to the cartridge turned on the game through the operator software, and boom, Celebi was there in my party. So I did confirm this actually works, and I think that is incredibly awesome. Now you might notice there is an upload game option. Now you cannot overwrite the game that is on your physical cartridge. Not to my knowledge anyway, I think that's why it's grayed out. However, I think what you could do is buy an empty Game Boy cartridge or Game Boy Color cartridge offline somewhere, and you can upload any Pokemon game or any Game Boy game you want to that empty cartridge and basically have a physical cartridge of that ROM. And I think a lot of people do this with fan-made ROM hacks or whatever, where that's how you end up with Pokemon Gengar version or something of that nature. And so you could definitely do a project incredibly similar to what Jeremy did with a Nintendo 64 project using this method. And you might've noticed something called photos. Basically, this works with the original Game Boy camera. I don't have one, I've never had one. I, I really don't know how it works, but other YouTubers have covered that feature quite extensively, and so you can check out one of them if you need more information on it, but the device does allow you to do that. Something else the GB operator allows you to do is validate you have a legitimate cartridge. Today, unfortunately, there are tons of fake games out there. You can buy fake cartridges all the time from Amazon, eBay, AliExpress, you name it. And so it can be a little bit tricky identifying legitimate cartridges. What this device allows you to do is authenticate that you have a real genuine cartridge. And thankfully, I didn't waste my time or my money all of my cartridges are 100% legit, and that made me feel good. Now the settings for the operator software is not the most impressive thing I've ever seen or anything, but there are quite a few options here. They have gamepad rumble support for games that support it. They also have different performance mode options. For example, frame skip is there. They also have frame skip intervals and frame skip threshold. They have a high fidelity mode. They have different color palettes. So you can choose your default Game Boy palette. You can choose grayscale. You can choose Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Light, Game Boy Color Brown one, Game Boy Color Red 1A, and the list goes on and on. There are quite a few different options here within settings that allow you to tweak and customize to your liking, and so I think that's pretty cool. Next up, there are LED effects, and honestly, this is nothing really to write home about. Basically, you have a static color or you can turn it off. That, that's really about it at this point. Next up, you can change your gamepad settings. I'm using an Xbox One controller to play my games, and I was able to rebind all of my keys on the controller using this setting it works incredibly well with zero issues. Now, one problem this software definitely has is the fact that you cannot remap your keyboard bindings. It says in an upcoming release, you'll be able to change the keyboard bindings. But if I'm being completely honest, I think this is something that has been listed in the software for quite some time. I remember watching Wolfden's video of this device, I think. And I think in that video, he complained about this not being an option. And then he was told that it would be released later in a future update. Well, his videos well over a year old at this point, and this is still not 
not a feature. So that that's kind of lame. Lastly, we have the save vault, which only has an open button and that takes you to where all of your game saves are located. The other gripe I have about this software, and I think another YouTuber had it as well, is that in order to save any of these settings, you have to scroll all the way to the bottom to find the save button. That is pretty bad in my opinion. And just like that, that's it. The device is incredibly simplistic, but it works. And sometimes that is the best way to do things. Simple, but effective. It just works, right? Now, there are some things they could definitely do to improve the overall software experience through free software updates. For example, like the keyboard bindings, they, they definitely need to get on that. I do wish they would allow for cheats and hacks and things of that nature natively within the software. I think they're focusing too much on that vanilla experience and there's nothing wrong with that but give people the option we all know what you're doing here you're, you're just reading the rom off the cartridge and emulating it that's all you're doing and it's no different than us taking that file and putting it into another emulator so save me the hassle save me the step and allow me to natively add cheats right here within the software but Outside of that, everything else is pretty good. I'd, I would probably give this product about a seven or eight out of 10. $50 is a little bit expensive for what you're getting, especially considering how it's not the only product out there that allows for it. But I think Wolf then talked about another product that was also $50 and it was a naked PCB. So for the same price, you definitely get a better looking package here. So I will give it that, but that's all I got. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do me a favor, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed and check out that Patreon. And until next time, you rock out.